Use the node voltage method to find the power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor in this circuit. This problem is not easy, and it's not because of the dependent source we see on the right, it's actually because of those two innocent looking resistors. Usually, we like to let this node be ground. But the problem with these two resistors on the bottom is that these two nodes are not connected to ground anymore, meaning they're not at zero potential. Having said that, it is still definitely possible to use nodal analysis to solve this problem, although something like mesh would be an easier way to do it. Let's call this node over here VA and this node over there VB. And then we'll call this middle node VC, this node VD, and this node VE. And immediately you'll get a sense of what I meant when I said the bottom resistors are very problematic because in this circuit, VD is not equal to the 135 volts of the source because the negative terminal of the source is not grounded anymore. It's actually connected to the 2 ohm resistor that is causing us issues. What 135 is equal to, though, is the difference between VD and VA. So, although it looks like there's a case of five unknowns in this circuit diagram, we only actually have three because we can express VD as VA plus 135 and replace that in the schematic. So, one fewer unknown. And we can do the same thing for VE in terms of VB. We can say VE is 10IX more than VB and replace it over there. So we now have three unknown voltages instead of five. So that's good progress. Now we also have IX as one of our unknowns, but we'll deal with this later. Using the node voltage method entails writing KCL equations. Before we're able to do that, let's assign directions. We'll say this current leaves the voltage source, IX also combines with it, entering this node, and then this current leaves the node, goes up through the 5 ohm resistor, and enters this node on the other side. The dependent source, let's say also delivers some current like this, and then these combine to go through the 4 ohm resistor, and then at VC, IX comes out, flows to the left, and let's say we have this current flowing down. At ground, it splits, part of it goes to the 2 ohm resistor, reaching the source, and the other part goes through the 1 ohm resistor, reaching the dependent source. Okay. So this is a reasonable assignment of current directions throughout the circuit. Let's start by writing the KCL equation at this node. We have IX entering, that's clear, but then how do we represent this current from the source in terms of voltages? This may seem tricky at first, but the key lies in knowing that this current is the same as this current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. 0 minus VA over 2. Can you see it? In other words, the voltage source is in series with the 2 ohm resistor, so the two currents are the same. Okay, the sum of these two must be equal to this current leaving node A going through the 5 ohm resistor. So that's VA plus 135 the potential at the initial node, minus VB plus 10IX, the potential at the final node, over the resistance. It's always this way. First node minus second node over resistance. This gives you the current. Okay, let's clear the denominators by multiplying throughout by 10. We can expand the brackets. We can take all the unknowns to one side and leave the constant in the other side. 10IX plus 20IX is 30IX, negative 5VA, negative 2VA is negative 7VA. So now we have this equation 
in the voltages VA and VB, but this IX is an extra unknown that we have to get rid of, and this is definitely possible. Let's look at the circuit again. IX is the current going through the 3 ohm resistor, so we can express it in terms of the voltages as follows. VC minus VA plus 135 all over 3. Replacing IX by its equivalent in terms of the voltages allows us to solve for an equation involving only VA, VB, and VC. There's some algebra required, but it's easy. Okay? So this is the first equation in the three voltages. Let's now repeat the process for this node. We have this current entering. Again, we can get it by using 0 minus VB over 1. And then, there's also this current entering, and it was that current leaving node A, if you remember, the one going through the 5 ohm resistor. These must add up to the current going through the 4 ohm resistor, which is VB plus 10IX minus VC over 4. And now, we clear the denominators by multiplying everything by 20, and then we'll expand the brackets, clean up, bring all the like terms together, and we reach this equation, again involving IX, so we have to get rid of it by replacing it with its equivalent in terms of the voltages. More cleaning up, more algebra, and you end up with this equation involving the three voltages. Finally, we repeat the process for this node, node C. We have this current entering the node, again, the current leaving node B, which was VB plus 10IX minus VC over 4. IX is clearly leaving node C, but the other current leaving node C is this current going down through the 20 ohm resistor, VC minus 0, ground, all over 20. Multiplying everything by 20 clears the denominators, expand, group-like terms, and deal with the IX in exactly the same way, replace it by its equivalent, open up the brackets, clean up, bring like terms together, and this is the resulting equation in the three voltages VA, VB, and VC. So, a linear system, three equations with three unknowns, you can solve it using any method, substitution, elimination, Gauss-Jordan, Kramer's rule, if you want to be fancy, anything. VA ends up being negative 129.6, VB is 68.4, and VC is negative 72 volts. Remember, the question was to find the power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor. What is the formula for power? It's either voltage times current, the square of the current times resistance, or the square of voltage divided by resistance. The easiest one to use here is V squared over R, because we have VC written down. So it's a direct substitution, nothing is to be calculated, and this works out to be 259.2 watts. So that's it. The power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor is around 260 watts, and that solves the problem. Are there easier methods? Definitely. But using nodal analysis is a possibility here. And that is what the video aimed to demonstrate.